What's happening guys? So today we're gonna to be going through how to build a marketing dashboard inside a planning analytics workspace. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. So this video is largely focused on planning analytics workspace. Now in terms of what we're specifically going to be covering, we'll take a look at how to add navigation and navigate through tabs inside a planning analytics workspace. We're also gonna write some lightweight rules to help us calculate our marketing optimization metrics. And last but not least, we're actually gonna build out our dashboard. We're gonna use some selectors, add some cube views and build it all out so that we can visualize the results of our optimization. Ready to get to it? Let's start coding. All right, so we're going to be working mainly inside of planning analytics to create our dashboard. Now, in terms of what we're going to be creating, our dashboard is gonna be pretty basic. It's going to have three key tabs. So the first tab is going to be our menu or navigation screen. Our second tab will be a overview screen and the last one will be a comparison. So pre versus post optimization. So let's get started. All we need to do is select new and choose book. And then our first sheet is going to be non-responsive. So we don't actually want our layout to be non-responsive. So rather than use this particular sheet, we'll create a new one and choose the responsive sheet. So this first one is going to be our menu. So we can rename that and we can delete this sheet now. All right, now in terms of our background, we're just going to use an image and I've got a URL for the IBM quantum computer. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And you can see we've got a nice background image. You can make this whatever you want. Grab an image from the web or grab an image from really anywhere and just paste it in there and you should be able to have an image. Now, what we wanna do is maximize this so we can just drop it over our little maximize square in the middle. And you can see we're automatically going to maximize that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually start creating our navigation. So in this particular case, we actually need to have our tabs set up before we can actually set up this navigation. So what we'll do is we'll set up those tabs, finish this navigation, and then start on the next two tabs. So the first tab that we wanna have is going to be this one here. So this is going to be our overview tab. So we can just hit use and we'll rename this one overview. And then the second tab that we're going to have is going to be using this particular layout here. And we can select use, and this one is going to be our comparison tab. Now, if we go back to our menu, we can now create some action buttons that navigate to these two tabs. So we can create an action button. And in this case, I'm just gonna put it right in the middle and we're going to color that gray or light gray. And we're going to label this one start. Perfect. And we also need to point it to the particular tab that we wanna to go to. So in this case, when we hit start, we just wanna to go to overview. So we can do that. We just need to select button target navigate to destination and set that as overview. Cool, all right, so then what we can also do is just copy these twice. So we're just gonna create another two buttons. And in this case, we'll set one button to go directly to our overview, sort of similar to start, but if you had multiple tabs, then you ideally want a button that goes to each tab in and of itself. So we're just gonna rename this one and call it overview. And the second button we're going to call comparison. Perfect, cool. All right, so if we save that, we'll just load it into our shared folder and we're gonna call this comparison dashboard. And hit save. Cool, all right, so that's saved. If we step out of edit mode and we select the button, you can see we're now going to our overview tab. If we select our overview button, again, we're going to our overview tab. And if we select comparison, Oop, we haven't repointed that one. So let's repoint our comparison button. Perfect, let's try that again. Perfect, so we're going to our comparison tab now. All right, cool, so that's our high level menu sort of done. Now what we're going to do is start fleshing out our overview tab. Now, when we set up our cube in the last video, we didn't actually set up any rules. So we're gonna need a couple of rules in order to help us view our optimization results. So what we'll do before we actually go and build out our dashboard, let's just set up those rules quickly. So if we step into our PA predict environment or whatever environment you've set up your sales cube, we just need to right click op sales analysis and select create business rules. We'll just bring this over to here. We're gonna delete this later. And what we're going to do is set up our rules for our cube. Now, so what we'll do is we'll first set up our regions and then we'll actually write the code. So we want a couple of key regions. So we want our sort of information or our header component to our rule. We're then going to have our actual rules and then we'll have our feeders. So let's go and set that up. 
first thing that we're going to do is add a quick section for our rule information. Then we're going to add our skip check region. So this is going to allow Planning Analytics to perform a whole heap faster. Then we're going to add in a little bit more information. And last but not least, add in some separated areas for our code. All right, so that's our basic framework laid out. Now, what we want to do is set up a few key rules. So we're going to set up a rule for our new sales value, which is going to be our marketing spend multiplied by our return on ad spend. So these are both stored within accounts. And then our second rule is going to be our rebate income value. And that's going to be our new sales plus our historical sales multiplied by our rebate percentage. So let's go on ahead and create those rules. So the first rule that we're going to create is our new sales rule. So our new sales is going to be stored in account 4995. And so the basic rule for our new sales is going to be our marketing spend. So account 4997 multiplied by our return on ad spend metric, which is account 4996. So once we've done that rule, we can then feed these accounts. So we're effectively going to be feeding account 4997, so our marketing spend and 4996, our return on ad spend to our new sales account, which is 4995. Now that our new sales rule is done, we can then start to formulate our rebate income rule. So our rebate income rule is going to be our new sales. So again, account 4995 plus our contract sales. So account 4999 multiplied by our overall profit percentage, which is stored in account 4994. And then last but not least, we're going to write our feeder. So we're going to feed our contract sales to our rebate income. Okay, so that's our rule set up. So we've set up a rule for our new sales, which is going to be account 4997 multiplied by account 4996. This will give us our new sales figure. And then we've got our second rule, which is account 4995 plus 4999. So our new sales plus our historical sales multiplied by our rebate income percentage, which should give us our rebate income. Now you could fashion this rule a little bit differently by using a hierarchy. In this case, I've just quickly done it using a sum. And we've also fed in our rules down the bottom here. Cool, so that's all of our rules set up. So we can now close this down and start setting up our dashboard. So the first thing that we wanna do is create a view of our cube that allows us to see an overview of all the accounts that we've actually got. So if we add a new view, we can bring this a little further down. And what we're going to do is just structure it so that we've got our stores, our products, our accounts, and then the time period that we're going to be optimizing for, which is just one month. Uh, in this case, it's against 2018 because that's when we loaded our data. So let's go on ahead and do that. The first thing that we're going to do is grab our store dimension and drag it into our rows selector. Then what we're going to do is do the same thing for our product dimension. So we're going to bring that into our rows. Then we're going to open up our account dimension. We're going to mess around a bit looking for the accounts that we actually need. And finally, we're going to scroll all the way down and choose the sales driver rollup. So these are going to be the accounts that we need for our optimization problem. Then what we're going to do is bring our time date dimension into our columns and we're going to search for all the months within December 2018. So I know I loaded this a little bit far back, but it's still going to work. And then we're going to create a calculated field to sum up all the days within the week so we can see our total result. And last but not least, we're going to do a similar thing and we're just gonna grab the actual and optimize actual versions out of the version dimension so that we can use those to analyze later on. All right, so that's our sales view set up. So we've got our stores, we've got our predicted products, we've got all of our accounts, and then we've got our data stored by week as well. And we can see our final rebate income figure down the bottom here. So now what we're going to do is just set up a couple of key filters and selectors so that we can actually navigate through this dashboard. First things first, let's resize our view so we've got a little bit more room on the screen. Then what we're going to do is open up our store dimension and bring that onto our screen as a selector. So we're going to grab the predicted selector subset and then we're going to do the same with our product selector. Now what we'll do is we'll add a bit of a label to our store selector and then realize that we brought in the wrong product selector, bring in the right one, then add a label to that as well. 
Last but not least, we're gonna grab a version selector from our view so we can just drag that in and then add a title box so we've got a label for that as well. All right, so that's our selector widgets done. So we've now got a store selector and a product selector and we've also got a version selector. Now what we actually need to do is synchronize this so that when we change our selectors up here, our view actually changes. So we can do that pretty easily by just selecting synchronize and choosing the fields that we actually wanna synchronize. Now in this case, what we wanna synchronize is our store, our product and our version. So if we deselect everything but those and hit synchronize dimensions, now when we choose our selectors, our view will update as well. So let's just make those visible. And if I select this particular store, our store is going to synchronize. And likewise, if I select a particular product, our product is going to synchronize as well. Now, if we change our version, that will change as well. And we can see that we don't actually have anything loaded into optimized actual at the moment. Again, so we'll go back to our actual and that's all working fine. All right, so the last thing that we wanna do on this particular dashboard before we actually go into our comparison dashboard is just select our top two selectors. And in this case, we're just going to create two callouts for our total sales and our total demand. So let's just add those. We'll grab our total sales call out first and that's just gone behind one of our selector widgets. So we just need to pull that back out and drag it down. We'll then do the same with our demand cell that we wanna make a call out to. And again, we'll drag that down and resize. And then last but not least, we're just gonna add some labels. So in this case, we can call out which of the fields we're actually seeing on the screen. Alrighty, so that's our overview dashboard done. What we're now going to do is create a view or a dashboard that allows us to compare our actual versus our optimized actual version. Now, if you actually take a look inside of our optimized actual, you can see that we don't actually have any data there. So what we should do before we actually go and create our optimization dashboard is actually load some data into our optimized actual view. So in order to do that, all we need to do is go back to our Python Jupyter Notebook and push our data in there. So we can go back to here and re-bring in our data set. And you can see at the moment that within our data frame, all of our data is going to our actual version. So we can change that. Perfect, so now our data push is going to go to our optimized actual. And last but not least, we just need to push it into our TM1 cube. Perfect, so that's loaded. Now, if we refresh, we can see that we've not now got data inside of our optimized actual version as well. And if we take a quick look, we can see that we've got the same data showing up between our actual view and our optimized actual view. Perfect, so that looks like it's all working. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is create our comparison sheet. So here what we're going to do is create a similar view to what we had within this sheet. So we can just copy that and bring it over into our comparison view. But now rather than comparing the data by day, what we're going to do is compare our data based on our version. So for this, what we're going to do is quickly modify our view so that we're actually comparing our data based on version. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect, so we now created our view that compares our optimized version versus our actual version. Now the second last thing that we wanna do is create some call out. So again, we're going to create a call out using our rebate income line. And we'll make that a bit smaller. And our actual line. Now the last thing that we're going to do is create a visualization of our optimized actual. So what we can do is copy this view and bring it down and then reshape it so that we're focused on our optimized actual and our rebate income. 
So let's drag down our days into our rows so we can visualize that within our stacked column visualization later on. We're then gonna remove our weekly roll up using the subset editor. From our account dimension, we're just gonna be focused on rebate income as we mentioned. So we're gonna choose that from within our dimension editor. And then we're also going to update our version dimension and keep optimized actual only because we're really only focused on that optimized version. Then we're going to drag our version into a filter so we don't need to be able to see that in rows or columns anymore. And we're going to move our products into rows because we want to really drill down on those. Last but not least, we're going to move our accounts into our columns and we're going to select our visualization and choose our stacked column visualization. Then all we need to do is resize. Perfect, so that's pretty much our dashboard done, but you can see that our view has sort of singled out and focused on our optimized version. Now that's because we've still got synchronization enabled, so we can disable that and bring back those versions. Now the absolute final thing that we can do to make this just a little bit better is to add some navigation. So at the moment you can see that we've sort of got our initial navigation where we can click through to each of our tabs. But what we can also do is add some navigation to go through each one of these and sort of build up a little bit of a flow. So this is purely optional, but it does add a little bit more of a professional feel to our dashboard. So at the moment, we've sort of just got a bunch of different components, but if we add our flow, that sort of ties it together a lot more nicely. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be pretty much the same method that we use to build our initial navigation. So I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly and add our navigation. Perfect, so that's cool. So that's our navigation largely done. So we've now got a next, a back, and a home button. So if we start out from our menu and hit start, we can then go to our next sheet and we go back to our menu again. We can go back and that all looks like it's working. Perfect, so that's our dashboard completely done. So we've added all of our views, we've set up our navigation, we've added our rules. That about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you've got any questions at all, be sure to drop a mention in the comments below. Peace.